Welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Leaders Podcast is a member of the Pharmacy Podcast Network with interviews and advice on building your professional network, brand, and a purposeful second income from students, residents, and innovative professionals. Hey, all, this is Eric Christensen from meded101.com. And I wanted to tell you about my book, Pharmacotherapy, Clinical Pearls, Case Studies, and Common Sense. We've sold over 4,000 copies of this book. It's the perfect resource gift for any pharmacist, pharmacy students who really want to enhance their clinical skill set. It's full of real-life pearls, case scenarios, drug interactions, and I've really focused on trying to teach you the clinical thought process That's essential to become a skilled practitioner in the real world. So I hope you enjoy the book. I hope you check it out. Uh, I know you'll certainly benefit from it. You can find the book on Amazon and Audible.com. Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Excited for another week. Uh, With the cover, uh, free pharmacy audiobook codes coming soon. Uh, There's a number of books that I've been working on producing, uh, and I'll have uh, lots of codes to give out here soon. I'm excited, uh, especially because uh, they're going to be around ASHP and uh, between now and when you interview. So hopefully I'll have codes for a book on uh, pharmacotherapy, well, case uh, study-based pharmacotherapy, uh, and clinical pearls, getting you ready for that interview, Uh, one on MTM, uh, and then also one for uh, interview and um, what questions you're going to be asked, how to answer those questions. Uh, so really excited uh, watching the next couple weeks uh, as I roll those out. Okay. Um, so again, Thrill of the Case uh, will be out hopefully this week uh, on uh, audiobook. And again, if you've never been on Amazon or Audible before, uh, you can get it for free. And then sometimes if you can't get it on the U.S. one, you might be able to go to U.K. or A.U., so the United Kingdom or the Australian Audible uh, and get the book uh, for free there as well. Though sometimes if you get the international ones, you may only be able to use it on your desktop. Uh, You can definitely use it on mobile if you get it from uh, audible.com here in the States. Um, The other book, uh, How to Build a Pharmacy Consulting Business, uh, that one's coming out soon too, so maybe two weeks, uh, three weeks hopefully, we'll see the audio book for that one. And then I'm working with TLDR Pharmacy, Uh, we're going to uh, have a big launch for an interview book hopefully uh, here soon, but um, that'll be a little bit closer towards uh, when you're going to start uh, thinking about the actual interview, so we'll make that timely. Uh, on uh, TLDR Pharmacy's blog, again, alcohol use disorder from November 6th and kidney beans, renal function, and drug dosing. So again, a great way to keep up with things, and it's a really an entertaining blog. Like There's pictures, there's it's just fun. It's a lot more fun than reading peer-reviewed journals, I assure you. Uh, Real Life Pharmacology, uh, the podcast had a really great new episode. I want to say it was a Pixaban, and uh, it was just about 10 minutes long, but it's nice to kind of hear about the old, which was metoclopramide or Reglan uh, on November 8th, and how we still use it. But then a Pixaban, uh, which is relatively new here uh, on November 15th yesterday, that podcast episode came out. Pharmacy Podcast Network had five different episodes. Uh, Joe Castleman and Ben Coakley uh, from the Income Outcomes Show talked about real estate as a good investment. Uh, I, my personal uh, way that I use real estate, or and again, I've you know made mistakes in the past, but this is my decision now: is I'm buying and holding, uh, regardless of whether the price goes up or price goes down. It's quite irrelevant to me. Uh, looking to pay these off. So uh, what I'm really doing is I'm hedging the income from the investments I'm making in audiobooks, taking that income, putting it into rental real estate, allowing those rents uh, to pay off these mortgages. And then uh, I have, again, a, a significant challenge in that 11 years, whatever college is going to look like then, we have to pay for three girls to go to college in the very same year. So while we'd love for them to get athletic or academic scholarships, so um, you know, as we're watching the states just completely, just absolutely abandoning uh, the state schools in terms of funding, uh, we know that if it goes the same way it is now, 
we're going to have to have significant income. And one way to save for college is to literally save a big pile of money. Another way is to create income-producing assets uh, like real estate, uh, like books and things like that that produce royalties. Uh, so that's going to be our approach. Um, and then, of course, we also have you know one of those 529 plans where we put some money in. So uh, we certainly will be able to help our kids uh, with college. Uh, we have no idea what it's going to look like then, but uh, hopefully we'll we'll have a good strategy. And you know, if I'm still working at the same place I am, they could go to the first two years for free. Uh, the Rocks RX strategy was uh, a pharmacy buying group uh, entrepreneur, uh, Ryan Smith, and talked about a different pharmacy business model based on territory, staff, pharmacy setting, and kind of a mixture of different development methods. So uh, again, if you're in the pharmacy owning business, that's kind of a good deal. And then uh, First Financial Bank also has another one uh, with Bob Grawl, uh, who talked about uh, with Todd Yuri about creating uh, business development and things like that. Uh, Ashley Clevens Hayes uh, interviews Coach Kristen, uh, who uh, she was a swimmer and it talks about some of the you know things that transfer from athletics or maybe the transfer from the way you think to athletics and then backwards. Uh, but I always love listening to those; are very empowering uh, episodes. And then the Snowflake Architectural Difference uh, from uh, FutureDose.Tech. So busy week on the Pharmacy Podcast Network, uh, a lot of good stuff. And then most recently, I want to say it was yesterday or late yesterday, uh, Gavel and Pestle Podcast, Darshan Kulkarni. And he's talking with a cardiologist. Uh, I think he, it's Emmanuel Fambu, but I think he said Manny Fambu. Uh, who's an MBA physician uh, who wrote a best-selling book called The Future of Healthcare, Humans and Machines Partnering for Better Outcomes. And I have a, a degree in human-computer interaction. And he talks a lot about the wearable technology and, and these kinds of things. And uh, it's really interesting. So uh, another book, if you are interested in that kind of thing, if you want to listen to Rise of the Robots, as pharmacists, they keep saying, oh, well, you know, your clinical skills will be what... Uh, you know, make us succeed in this market. And I want to be careful with that because AI can do a pretty darn good job of assessing things clinically. Uh, they don't call in sick. Uh, they can be, AI can be available at any time of the day. AI can pull amazing amounts of data. AI can learn. So what I would be interested in is how long would it take Watson to take the NAPLEX? And I honestly think that if it weren't about the actual clicking of a button and that just answering the questions, I bet Watson could get 100% on the NAPLEX in less than one second. And think about that. So here you are, you're studying, you've got this big test that's supposed to tell you how good you are at knowing this stuff, and a computer beats you in a second. And I really think that's how it is. So when we say what our future is, it's not humans versus machines. It's going to be humans again with machines, just as we've used computers before. Now, AI is something special, and there's a lot of doomsday. If you watch a lot of Netflix, there's a lot of doomsday movies about AI. But that's why I am so reticent to say, you know, well, get a pharmacy degree, get a pharmacy job, because that's just not how it works, or I don't think that's how it's going to work. It's going to be create a pharmacy entrepreneurial niche and then you know so mine is you know teaching in community college and uh, also writing these books and, and audiobooks and things like that but the whole get a job based on your degree it's kind of a thing of the past you really have to have some kind of niche within the pharmacy space so uh, definitely listen to that the future of healthcare humans and mu machines uh, partnering for better outcomes Kind of a really neat book if you're into that kind of uh, technology stuff. If it scares you, I don't know. I mean, maybe do the ostrich thing and just be like, I hope it doesn't affect me. Uh, but AI is certainly here to stay. Um, let's see. So uh, Fit Pharmacist, he talked about the ketogenic diets. Uh, so kind of understanding how that works. Uh, if you are like a CrossFit person or if you're somebody who's tried it, they're effective. Uh, but you always want to be careful. There's some caveats that you have with ketogenic diet. And it's 
the thing is, is that people want to like partially do something, put their toe in the water. Kind of hard to do that with something like a ketogenic diet. Uh, your financial pharmacist, uh, they had an evaluation of your 401k. Uh, I have a pension now because I'm kind of glumped into the teachers here in Iowa, so I don't really have a 401k anymore, so I don't really have that. But uh, they're always really good at explaining things really well, the pluses, the minuses, and things like that. But again, I, I really like the episode they had last time. It was sponsored by Policy Genius. Uh, it's how to determine the priority of investing. And I really want to get out of the, okay, well, do you invest in real estate or do you invest in stocks? I invest in, what I do is I have uh, money in a retirement account that was, you know, from like a 401k that's, you know, kind of a rollover. And I put some money into it every once in a while. Uh, but I have a pension, which is, you know, has a death benefit. So if something would happen to me, you know, my wife gets 100K or something like that right now. Um, but it would basically pay me each year in my retirement. Uh, and then I have the real estate that I, a couple of houses that I want to pay off to help pay for my kids' tuition. And then I invest in people. I invest in people who have great books. What I'd really love to do is I'm I'm hoping there's a student or resident out there that in the cover of darkness or under, you know, has been writing a book, maybe 18,000 words or more. Uh, so that's about two audio hours uh, that they can put together and, and I'd love to work with them. So kind of something I'm hoping to look for soon. Maybe I'll have some kind of fun contest, like we'll make a book and uh, something like that. But I think there are a lot of stories out there uh, that people have that would be valuable. Uh, and I think, I guess my ultimate goal would be to write a successful book with a student while they're in school and have the book pay for their school so that when they graduate, the book will have taken care of it. That would be cool. So kind of a, a dream that I have that not to give a scholarship for an entire pharmacy education, but to give uh, the ability to create the the wealth uh, by yourself uh, that would pay for it. So it'd just be something cool. Uh, Brian Fung, so again, he's got this kind of cool thing where you've got you can set a reminder on YouTube to hear about it, and I, I thought I set the reminders, uh, that uh, the Residency Showcase episode is out, and it's really good. And then there's going to be one on receptions on the 24th, and one on preparation on the 17th, which is just coming up here tomorrow. Uh, so that next episode is coming up. And as part of the preparation, certainly the, the audio books that I've been involved in, Thrill of the Case, um, the MTM book that's coming out, the interview that's coming out, uh, Pharmacotherapy, the more you're in conversations with other people, the more you're going to feel like what it is to be part of that residency group and to feel that confidence. There's always the imposter syndrome, like I don't belong, I shouldn't uh, be part of this, or am I really good enough to get a residency? And so one thing that kind of just came out is the AHA alcohol or alcohol guidelines, cholesterol guidelines. So the American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology, both updated their cholesterol guidelines. And in a residency interview, you should be able to articulate, okay, well, what changed? You know, so you should be able to know that, okay, family history, health conditions, ethnicity was part of it. And then there's kind of a stepped approach with ezetimibe and then what are they doing with the PCSK9s? And they're saying that, you know, they could be added for very high-risk patients, you know, if you've got an extra eighty dollars or $90,000 lying around. Uh, but then they're saying some things about primary prevention. And they're also talking about genetic conditions that cause a very high LDLC. So you want to be able to speak intelligently about the AHA updates and cholesterol and You'll probably see something from TLDR Pharmacy. They're not notably good at getting stuff out timely for things like this. But that's something that you're going to want to know. And uh, that shows that you're up to date and you're keeping up with things, even outside of school. So you're a P4 now. If you're a P4 now, they're not sending you updates as they should, actually. Uh, you're paying extra this last year, and what are you getting? You just go to sites. You know, you should be getting news from the mothership. Hey, 
Wanted to let you know, AHA Association and American College of Cardiology updated their cholesterol guidelines. Here's what you need to know for your residency. That's what a good college of pharmacy would do. Anyway, just my own stump there. Um, Kevin Yee, uh, he hasn't talked much pharmacy. He's talking high-ticket closing. I think he was uh, talk, had an episode a couple days ago. And then every time I look at Paul Trans, but still nothing new since the Amazon thing. has an amazing following, but... Uh, he's doing some really cool DIY stuff with Home Depot. So that's it for this week of the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast. Again, uh, if you've got a book idea or you want to do something with a book uh, with me, send me a pitch. Let me know what you want to do. I've got plenty of money. Uh, I just uh, want don't necessarily have the time to write original books right now. Uh, I am working on a couple, and I've, I've got one contract with a major publisher, but uh, that would just be a lot of fun for me. And then... Uh, if you are also interested in a different kind of side uh, gig or side business, uh, my, I, I think you guys know that we pay for our daughter's uh, medicine out of pocket. And uh, one of the things that helps us do that is my wife uh, is with RNF, which is Rodan and Fields. And that's been really kind of a boon for us, too, that we can kind of go back and forth with our side hustles and pay for our children's medicine. Uh, which is on the order of a bit more of a very high skin. <laughs> it's a car payment a month uh, without a car uh, that we're putting out there. So if you're interested in Rodan and Fields, uh, you can contact her. She's Mindy Guerra from Drake University. Uh, and, um, you know, I think I'm really good at we'll work at something and I'll kind of take over and, and do a lot of it and let's get it done and push it forward. She's more of the mentor, bring you into my community, uh, help you out as somebody who's uh, interested in it, uh, but, but maybe has a little bit of a business mind, even are in MBA uh, program. And she's really more of somebody who's going to create a great environment for you. So uh, contact either of us if you're interested in uh, us helping you uh, work on your side hustles and things like that. All right, talk to you guys next week. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook. Thank you for listening to the Pharmacy Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag #PharmacyLeaders. Hash